Okay, Sasha. So last week you told me Conrad to get AI to control your computer. I did that. I installed Open Interpreter, as you said, and it now controls my keyboard and mouse. And I am not impressed, Sasha. I'm sorry. All right. So you got to give me a little bit more. Like what happened? What went wrong? I can't think of anything interesting for me for it to do. I mean, it's like it gives you this really cool command. It's called I. And I say dash OS like that. Okay. You got my, you see my terminal window? Yep. All right. It basically says, okay, LM on your computer. Great. Okay. So I'm going to do a task. Um, amazing task. Uh, take a screenshot of Reuters.com and put it in my downloads folder. Okay. Here we go. Thinking, thinking now. This this Python program basically can control my like it, it just opened up my browser and it's sleeping for five seconds. So it's waiting for the whole page to load up. Very interesting. And then yep. it is saving it. And it can't find it for some reason. <laughs> see. Okay, let's see what oh, it does. Oh, it corrects itself. I don't even know what the problem there was. You go. And nice. it put it on my folder and yay, it's task is done. Okay. So here we go. And I open up and oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so why are you saying, <laughs> so what, what, what was the feedback? Why were you upset with it? I mean, it's like, I just put a screenshot on my, my dad can do that. Okay. Yeah. The things that it can do right now are quite basic. I'm sure if you asked it to email this, like this is something we tried before, it couldn't do it, right? There's a lot of these workflows that just haven't been optimized yet, whether it's on the actual training side or actually on the software side in terms of how these systems use um, you know, the actual software on your computer. So this is the worst it's going to be. Like that's the, really what you have to look at here. And, and we'll put up a screenshot where even the Anthropic team basically says like, expect this to improve dramatically in the next couple of months. We were surprised by how rapidly Claude generalized from the computer use training we gave it in just a few pieces of simple software, such as a calculator and a text editor. For safety reasons, we didn't allow the model to access the internet during the time of the training. You see enough signals here that this is just like we are on the exponential ramp up here. Forbes has actually covered the same thing and it covers a lot of Leopold's situational awareness essay where basically this seems like it's on a linear trajectory, but I would argue it, we're actually on an exponential one. If you look at this one as well on OS World, which is a benchmark that evaluates the capabilities of these models. We started out with something like a 7.8% on the previous model. We're at 22% now, just a very short period of time later. 70 to 75 percent is considered you know human level like this is the, like again the worst it will be and this is like what it can already do so i i think that there's a a, a lot of room to grow here okay let's just use the comp the comparable which is alexa okay you know yeah jeff bezos have been sticking in more skills and more investment into alexa yet to this day i'm pretty sure everyone just says what's the time and what's the weather that's what I use it for. Yep. Although it has this amazing capability, the problem is all of us got excited by the first you know, release of Alexa and we realized it's, it's kind of dumb and it makes mistakes. And therefore us human beings, we dumb it down. We stopped exercising the full capability of Alexa because it got it wrong. I actually yep. think AI in some sense with controlling sort of real life computer, real life stuff, unless it gets it perfect the first time, us human beings will just not trust it and therefore we don't use it. And so it doesn't matter what it can do because we won't use it. I agree, but look at the rate of innovation that happened from GPT-2 to GPT-4 to the point where like, I probably feel more comfortable going out and asking GPT-4 something now than I do going on Google and, and looking up something myself or even potentially speaking to a doctor sometimes. And I don't recommend people necessarily do that. But for me personally, it's gone to the point where the convenience and the trust ratio are high enough where I'm willing to give it a shot. And I think it's a totally possible that in the next 12 to 24 months, we get to that point with these systems. And you just think about the number of workflows that we have in our lives that actually are affected by this. Let's say you want to go off and do your taxes. Soon it's going to have the training data of thousands, if not millions of people who have gone through that. And it's going to be in the tax software's uh, interest to make sure that they can integrate with this ecosystem. Again, I lean back on this is the worst it'll be. 
my skepticism is around that AI is so much around knowledge. So finding information, I totally agree. I use AI way more than I use Google search today. Hands down, you are right. But when it takes that agentic leap to do stuff, our tolerance for mistakes tend to be really small. And so when it doesn't get it right, our humanness, we kind of set that expectation that, well, I can't really trust that. And I think so much technology is available, but the problem is us. In my mind, this is actually more of like a, a when, not if. And we've heard multiple times now, like um, Sam Altman refer to the safety and alignment issues. We've also seen the Anthropic team, which will put up a screenshot here as well, saying we're concerned about you know the safety of giving people this capability. And the labs have historically released something in its infancy, almost intentionally, to kind of see how people use it and how they try to stress test it. So in my mind, I wouldn't be surprised if there's actually already a better, more capable model. And we've been given the baby model to see basically how people will use it and, and abuse it. So I again, I am pretty confident that this is actually going to improve very quickly. And I probably go down the Sam Altman school of thought here saying, I think we will be giving this a lot more control as we develop trust. Check I'm going to keep going on the agent front here. Um, what do you see as the current hurdles for computer controlling agents? Uh, safety and alignment. Like, if you are really going to give an agent the ability to start clicking around your computer, um, which you will, <laughs> you, you are going to have a very high bar for the robustness and reliability and the alignment of that system. Uh, so, technically speaking, I think that, you know, we're getting like, pretty close on the capability side. But the sort of agent safety and trust framework, that's going to be the long term. And now I'll kind of ask a question. It's almost the opposite of one of the questions from earlier. Do you think so? I think there are enough signals, especially from the large labs, basically saying, we think we've got enough here to crack it. We're very consciously choosing not to crack it because of the safety and alignment risks associated with having you know a thousand or millions of these rogue agents going off and, and doing these things without building the controls first. And you're saying, yeah. well, tomorrow is going to go, it's going to go crazy. I think this is like a generational thing between you and I. You're such a, you're <laughs> such an optimist. I'm such a, I'm just the old fart. That's like, ugh. all right. We've seen how more data we've seen, how more compute um, have like an impact on on these models capability. We went from GPT two to GPT four in the space of two years, and it's a completely it's like a night and day uh, difference. So you're saying that you can't see that trend happening again in this completely greenfield space. I will keep this AI control on my computer. I will trust you to leave it on my on my terminal, and that's all I'll give you for now. So I'll see you next week. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>